Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'm gonna be going through our biggest mistakes of the growing season. So last year we made a similar video to this one going through all of the biggest mistakes that we made growing peppers in 2021. So we'll do the same thing for 2022 because it's very important to recognize your mistakes and learn from them. That's how we become better gardeners. So we actually had an excellent growing season. It was hot and dry, but our peppers fared really well. But that doesn't mean it was a perfect season and there are some mistakes that we made. So in this video, I'll cover five mistakes that we made this season and the steps we're gonna to take to avoid them next year. But first, if you're interested in additional pepper growing content, check out our Patreon. We post videos and pictures, whatever's going on behind the scenes that you won't see here on YouTube, including our winter projects and unique varieties or little tips and tricks here and there for growing better plants. Plus it's a big support to us. So if you're interested, check it out in the description below. Okay, so on to the mistakes that we made this year. The first mistake was placing our grow bags on top of soil. So what I mean by that is planting a pepper in a grow bag and then putting that on top of raw, bare soil. Like I said, it was a very dry season for us here in Connecticut. So the roots of our plants were constantly searching for water, for moisture, and the roots were actually strong enough in many cases to go right through our grow bags and into the soil below. Now this was a shock to me the first time I went to pick up one of our potted plants and found that it was stuck to the ground. There was this horrible sort of tearing sound as I ripped it out of the ground. And I consider this a bad thing for two reasons. When I went to pick up the bag and ripped those roots, that likely damaged the plant. You're obviously damaging the root system and that's going to stunt the plant's growth. But also it kind of ruined the grow bags too. It likely deteriorated the quality of the grow bag. So when you grow in grow bags, place it on a non-organic surface, something like your driveway or some bricks or anything like that where the roots won't be sort of tempted to continue growing down to find additional moisture. The next mistake we made was not sterilizing our potting soil early in the season. We had a bad infestation of thrips indoors on our young pepper seedlings all the way through until we transplanted them outside. And even throughout the growing season, we were finding thrips in the garden. We tried many different pesticides indoors. We even considered releasing beneficial insects into our home. We didn't end up doing that. We ended up using some natural spray on pesticides that controlled the population, but definitely didn't get rid of them completely. So to avoid this in the future, we're going to use sterile potting mix, or we're going to be pouring boiling water into any potting soil that will be indoors. We wrote an article about dealing with thrips on pepper plants, so if you're interested or you have that issue, you'll find that down in the description. So to any of you that decided to overwinter your peppers this year, I recommend looking at the foliage right now, right after you watch this video, go take a very close look at the plants that you brought in from outside and just try to see any signs of pests, whether it's aphids or thrips or whiteflies, Anything that looks unusual or like an egg of some sort, even if it's not a living insect, you might find the eggs of a future batch of insects. So in that case, you might want to just get rid of those plants, move them back outside or into a place where the pest population won't be as much of an issue. The biggest concern is bringing those pests to where all of your plants are, where they can spread and become even more difficult to control. Our third mistake is related to the last one, and that is not using insect netting when we brought our plants outdoors. A lot of pest populations sort of emerge and show up early in the spring, and they're looking for places to feed. We ended up having a pretty bad problem with Asiatic beetles feeding on our plants, and also caterpillars and cutworms in the garden. And one of the best ways to prevent these problems outdoors is actually putting up a physical barrier. So insect netting is a great way to do this and we've already invested in some and we'll be trying it out next year. But here's a picture of my mom's garden and she had the insight to use insect netting early in the season and her peppers were pretty much pest free and they grew amazingly well this year. One of the reasons we didn't do this is simple laziness. You have to buy it and you have to set it up, take it down, uh, you have to protect it from wind. And anytime you wanna check on the plants or they're growing, you need to adjust the covering. But it's definitely worth it for both insects and animals that like to eat your pepper plants. It's gonna prevent mice and voles, rats or bunnies, even deer from accessing the plants and potentially ruining them. And a quick note there, insect netting is definitely different from floating row cover. Insect netting is very fine and most of the light can penetrate through, whereas floating row cover is a lot more opaque and is usually used in the colder months to protect plants from frost. 
So the next mistake is a bit controversial and that is using straw as our mulch. Now I'm gonna preface this by saying I don't think this was actually a mistake, but we are planning to move away from using straw towards using leaf mulch instead. Now there are two reasons that we're planning on doing this. Number one is that straw mulch often contains seeds for that grass. So all throughout this season, we were plucking out grass seedlings from our raised beds where we put the straw mulch down. And this has also happened in the past. We just haven't been able to find a brand that doesn't have any seeds at all. Now straw mulch can last for multiple years, so it's really only an issue in the first season. You have to fight off those weeds, but part of the reason we mulch in the first place is to suppress weeds. So if you're just planting weed seeds along with your straw mulch, it kind of defeats the purpose. The second reason that we're switching to leaf mulch instead is that we have free leaves. We now have our own property with plenty of deciduous trees that drop their leaves in the fall. So we're starting to collect those leaves. If you wanna learn how to make leaf mold, we just released a video over on our other channel, Geeky Greenhouse. I'll leave a link to that video down below. It's a great way to use a free resource, your own leaves in your backyard to make your gardens better. So with all that said, if you have a bunch of straw, it's not like it's a bad mulch. It's still a great mulching option. I just don't like that it's full of seeds and you have to buy it. And our final mistake of the season was not planting enough flowers. We planted a lot of flowers this year. We had tons of alyssum and we had zinnias and cosmos, but we didn't plant enough. I wish we had more flowers surrounding and integrated into our pepper garden. The flowers just add so much benefit and beauty to your garden. And next season, we have big plans for growing more flowers. We're even planning to transform part of our lawn into a micro prairie filled with native flowers and grasses where wildlife can flourish and we can attract more pollinators to our property. The flowers we did plant attracted lots of beneficial insects. We saw so many hoverflies around our sweet alyssum, along with bees and flies of all sorts. So I highly recommend that you plant sweet alyssum. It's just one of the easiest flowers to grow. We even planted some around the base of our potted pepper plants so that those beneficial insects were pretty much right around our pepper plants. So what mistakes did you make this year? What failures did you have in your pepper garden or your vegetable garden? Let us know down in the comments below. We will be reading them. It's always interesting to find out how other gardeners are making improvements. I have a bunch of shout outs for our recent Patreon members. Thank you, Richard F. KB, Mark G, Blake P, David N, Liz S, Tom F, William H, Z A, Blake, Matt B, Jason W, Arthur M, Terry D, Francisco E, Jonathan M, Daniel H, Felix B, Michael A, Jason N, Jennifer G, Scott C, Kevin, Linda M, and Allison W. Thank you all for joining our Patreon. If you're interested in exclusive content, additional videos and pictures about growing peppers, check it out down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching Pepper Geek and we'll see you next time.